Well, hey, everyone, and welcome back to Pushing the Limits. Fabulous to have you with me once again. It's awesome that you check in every week. Today, I have Dr. Robert Silverman to guest, who is a chiropractic doctor. He's also a clinical nutritionist with six different degrees in clinical nutrition. Why would you do that? I don't know. He's amazing. International speaker. He's the author of Inside Out, Our Health. Uh, and immune reboot so he's just a very accomplished uh, functional medicine practitioner and uh, he is was also chiropractor of the year in the USA in 2016 um, and he uses uh, a combination of, of treatments for everything from functional nutrition to dealing with joint pain to cutting edge science-based non-surgical approaches Pretty much Dr. Silverman knows a lot about a lot of things. And today we're going to be doing a deep dive into gut health and into immune health and everything that you need to know because the immune system is 80% of the immune system resides in the gut. So it's something that's really, really key is to get your microbiome right and your gut health right. Um, so I do hope that you enjoy this episode with Dr. Robert Silverman. He's an absolutely legend and a really fun guy to, to interview. Before we head over to the show, I'd love you to check out everything that I'm doing over at lisatamati.com is my main website. I have an anti-aging and longevity supplement range on there that you can find. And I also uh, do functional medicine testing, have a hyperbaric oxygen therapy clinic, uh, do genetic test testing, uh, age testing, you name it, uh, we do it. So check it all out on lisatamati.com. We also have um, uh, corporate wellness programs that we run alongside Cam Cal Cohen and Neil Wagstaff, two colleagues of mine. And of course, I do a lot of motivational speaking and have a number of books. Book number five just came out, Thriving on the Edge, which is an interview series with elite athletes. Coming from a background of ultra marathons, I thought I'd better put out a book around <laughs> everything that you can learn from extreme athletes and, and the lessons that, that they have to teach us. So do check that out. That's Thriving on the Edge, which you can find under the book section on my website as well. Right. I do hope you enjoy the show with Dr. Robert Silverman and you learn a lot about the microbiome. So we'll see you on the other side. Thanks, friends. And don't forget to uh, give us a rating and a review and share this with your friends. Well, hey, everyone, and welcome back to Pushing the Limits. Today, I have a superstar uh, chiropractic uh, superstar. He was chiropractor of the year in America in 2015, uh, clinical nutritionist with over six degrees, an international speaker. Um, this man's letters after his name are more than you can possibly imagine. Dr. Rob Silverman, welcome to the show. It's fantastic to have you. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Oh, it's just absolutely wonderful to 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 share your insights with my audience today. And I I've just been saying to Dr. Rob, we could we could take this conversation in a hundred different directions because you have so much expertise in in different areas, and you're the author of a couple of books. And uh, you know, I I really wanted to do a deep dive today into uh, things like the immune system and gut health and the vagal nerve and uh, peptides. And so, um, where where should we start this conversation, Dr. Rob? Because there is a lot of uh, directions that we could go when we're talking to you. Wow, there's so many. And I, I think uh, the crux of what we wanted to talk about, if you wanted to get to the peptides, peptides yeah, yeah. was without question longevity. Yeah, my favorite. So topic. maybe we'll dig into longevity, go through the peptides, and then come back to the vagus nerve. And uh, I'll try and weave in the immune system with longevity, because you'll see that I have a quote that I've been using in reference to longevity and the immune system and the gut and just go for it. So yeah, um, that yeah, sounds, let's, 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 let's do that. So give us a, a, a the 30 second um, background as to how did you get here from chiropractic in the beginning to where you are now? Wow. Um, well, I got into chiropractic, um, you know, Mark Twain always, always says the two most important days of your life are the day you're born and the day you know why. Everybody knows the day they're born. We just sometimes lie about it, but your why. And I think your why is, I mean, you have a strong why. I mean, it's so compelling. We were discussing it before about your mom and yourself and everything of that nature. But my why is simple. I suffer from congenital torticollis. So I have an asymmetry in my neck and um, I grew up in a tough section of New York City, the borough being the Bronx. 
And wow. um, people, yeah, they didn't understand what I had. So I wanted to get it fixed. And in 18, I went and um, I went to an orthopedic surgeon to get a surgical intervention. And he basically said there wasn't anything he could do, but why didn't I try a chiropractor? And as the story goes, I tried a chiropractor, changed what I wanted to do with my life. It changed my trajectory. Um, yeah. My essence, my credo is I always wanted to be helped. I want to help people by the way I was also helped. It's hmm. exciting. And I look for clinical outcome. And, um, you know, chiropractic taught me a lot about the mechanical aspects of life. It taught me about the alternatives, pathways, um, always being able to touch the patient. But there was a system that was missing. And that system really was applying nutrition and lifestyle. So he started from weight loss. And now here we are talking about longevity, which I believe is the incisive topic of 2023. Yes, I totally agree. <laughs> so it's really, really exciting. So you're, you're up on all of these areas. So let, let's let's go first into uh, the immune system because, you know, um, when we're talking about longevity, the, no conversation should, should exclude the immune system because the immune system equals longevity if you've got a good immune system. So... And when we talk about the immune system, we're talking about gut health because eighty percent of our immune system is in the gut. Correct. Um, That's correct. So, yeah, why is it important that we have a good immune system? And we've just all been through three years of hell with COVID and uh, all of that big palaver, um, <laughs> with the horrors of of all of that. And what really came out with that some statistics. And I heard a couple of your lectures that you were talking and comparing. American health with say the Japanese population and the horrific difference in the statistics during COVID. I mean, do you want to make a comment on there um, about why that might be that the Japanese fared so much better than the Americans? Well, those statistics were very telling in that uh, the Japanese were 12 times more likely, 12 times, not percent times more likely to have a positive COVID test. Um, excuse me, the Americans were over the Japanese and the Americans were 17.4 times more likely to die than the Japanese. So when wow. you look at it, you saw the difference in what we ate as an American compared to the Japanese. We eat more saturated fat. We eat a considerable more amount of sugar and sweeteners. I think about 235% of sugar and sweeteners, 396% increase in saturated fat. The Japanese ate more fish oils, green tea and a little bit more rice. But the bottom line was American men were seven times more obese and American women were 10 times more obese than their Japanese counterparts. Mm -hmm. So once again, you know, we're talking about health, what goes in your mouth, your lifestyle really was shown in that study in reference to your immune health. So essentially 80% of Americans now are overweight or overbe or obese. 7% of Americans are metabolically healthy. Yeah. So when I talk to all my brethren, I say, look, well, no matter what you do, you have got to take care of yourself. Vaccine, no vaccine. That's your personal decision. Anything you do will work better if the host is healthy. Yeah. And unfortunately, Americans are not healthy. And that breeds really with the immune system. Tying immune system to longevity, I believe that longevity is turning on the health switches of health. However, I believe the master switch is having a robust, efficient immune system for longevity. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, when we look at um, some of the conversation and, you know, during COVID, um, there was not much conversations about things like vitamin D and zinc and, you know, some of the basic nutrients that can really support our immune system. Still no conversation. Um, yeah, like where was that conversation and, and what, you know, like, and now we've got a lot of people and I'm seeing a lot of people uh, with long haul COVID, you know, l symptoms after the vaccine or after the the, um, the the COVID itself, whatever the cause, the, the um, you know, there's ongoing problems that people are facing. What can, you know, and I've heard you lecture on this a little bit too, what can we people do if they are facing uh, an energy crisis after COVID and they're feeling like got no energy, got no immune system, get sick with every, you know, little bug that's going through, you know, what can we do to actually support our immune system from a nutritional standpoint and exercise and lifestyle standpoint? Yeah, it's funny. You use the very interesting term. You said an energy 
issue, which is correct, which implies that mitochondria is inefficient. And that yeah. is correct. Your mitochondria is not working or not working efficiently. So our body has something called, in reference to our mitochondria, cellular danger response. A mitochondria has a switch. And the number one function of a mitochondria is to produce ATP and energy for the cell. But what most people don't realize, a secondary function of mitochondria is to support the innate immune system. Our immune system can use up to about 55% of our mitochondria energy. After that, the mitochondria has to do that cellular danger response and that switch and shut off its ATP production and go help the innate immune system. So wow. what does that mean? We've all had a flu. We're tired. We sleep it off. We feel better the next day. But with COVID, with that cellular danger response, shutting that switch off, you just were absolutely drained. You were just laying there. Now, what's interesting about that switch is that it's a one button, one step switch. However, to reactivate your mitochondria, to turn it back on, it's three distinct switches, mm -hmm. all of which, if you don't go one, two, and three, one, and you don't get to two is a rate limiting step. Turning one and two, but not getting three is a rate limiting step. So I ask people, what have you done to train your mitochondria to turn back on? And most mm -hmm. people haven't. Huh. So hence the number one element or the number one characteristic of long COVID is fatigue. As a matter of fact, fatigue is the number one complaint going into a doctor's office today. Yeah, so when you stop. say energy issue, it's coming from the mitochondria and that's what's adversely affected. Now, to take it to the next step and give you a 20,000 foot view, the mitochondria's origin come from bacteria. So it communicates and is a cousin to your gut. As you said, rightfully, 80% of our immune cells are in our gut. So our mitochondria has an impact on our gut health as well. So when people have gut issues, they also have fatigue issues. Yeah. And, and when you've got no energy and you're stuck in this cycle and the cell danger response, and there's, uh, was it Robert Naveau who, um, uh, who coined that or, or did the studies around that? It's it's taking the energy to protect itself and, and changing the structure. Does it, does it harden the uh, mitochondrial membrane or something? That, that's what's happening in the cell danger response when the body is actually switching off ATT, ATP production and, and actually doing something to stop the virus coming in, but also stopping nutrients getting in and out. Is that, is that correct? I haven't done it a deep dive. It actually shuts it off. It really puts it in a slumber. It puts yeah. it to sleep. Wow. So it's not effectively doing anything, but supporting the innate immune system. The problem is that it doesn't turn back on and that's yeah. the issue. So that's why we make these recommendations like low level laser therapy, you know, the proper amount of um, light or mm -hmm. um, the, so red light. Wavelength. Yep. Yeah. Well, so essentially there are four complexes to the mitochondria, complex one, two, three, and four. Violet light of a nanometer four or five wavelength turns on complex one and two. Mm -hmm. A green wavelength, which is five, approximately 520 nanometers, turns on complex three. And their red wavelength, which is a 635 approximately, turns on complex four. So if you have utilization, like I do in my office, you have the ability to turn all the complexes of the mitochondria. In addition wow. to the mitochondria, complex is getting turned on by low-level laser or, or non-thermal laser or electromagnetic transfer of energy. There's certain nutritional protocols that you may want to adhere to, you know, for mitochondrial recharge. So and NMN, making NAD+, resveratrol, omega-3 fatty acids, coenzyme Q10 are all great choices to allow that mitochondria to imbue itself with energy and restart its engines and go through complex one, two, and three and get to the ability to um, start producing ATP efficiently once again. Remember, ATP is produced by the mitochondria, but it needs to be efficient because if it's inefficient, mitochondria will produce a lot of exhaust, yeah. exhaust like reactive oxygen species. Exactly. And that's the problem. Our mito one of the biggest problems in longevity is the fact that we have mitochondria dysfunction and producing all these free radicals. So we're, we're producing these things that are damaging to us in addition to not producing enough energy. So the seesaw of health is really turned upside down or topsy-turvy. Wow. And one of my um, great mentors and teachers, Dr. Elizabeth Yurth, who's a cellular health expert and longevity expert at Colorado, 
you know, she said the mitochondria are at the basis of most, not all, but of most diseases. Like if we can get down to that cellular level and really start to work on the mitochondria, we affect the cell, we affect the system, we affect the organs, you know, rather than a, a, a Band-Aid approach, which, you know, with traditional medicine, we tend to go, oh, you have this symptom, therefore we give you this pill. Um, but going back down to a couple of levels down to the mitochondria and looking at what's actually happening at the mitochondria at the cellular level so that we can actually start to rebuild you from the inside out, so to speak, um, and, and, and looking at that energy cycle with all of those lovely coenzymes and nutrients that we need to make that whole wheel spin, you know, the um the, the citric acid cycle and the you know atb production and uh, the electron transport chain and it's all very complex and if you've got missing things like you know simple things like magnesium or, or zinc or you know all of these basic nutrients and and you can be just deficient in one or two of these and the whole world won't spin is that a is that a good analogy i think it's an outstanding analogy it was quite explanatory and quite illuminating all in one and i think people need to know that they can um, definitely work and help their mitochondria. You know, where we are, if you don't change, nothing good is going to happen. You, ha you have to make a change to change your health trajectory. So a lot of people always put it off. So what would you expect? And I do believe in the last year or two, the mitochondria dysfunction has really taken the news cycle by storm and well, it should. Yeah. And well, it should, yeah. And then the other piece of the puzzle is inflammation. You've got cytokines, you've got interleukin uh, six and uh, eight, and you know T TNF alpha and other cytokines that have been going berserk, perhaps you know during this this pandemic. But but now we've got the cytokine uh, cytokine drizzle happening. Um, <laughs> heard, heard you say. Um, and and so we've still got these up regulation and some of these cytokines. What can we do? Like what are cytokines and why are they there? And why do we have an inflammatory response? And why does it not shut off when it should? Yeah, what you were referring to, and I, you know, I'm honored you you watched a whole bunch of my podcasts. There's cytokine I love your storm. Stuff. <laughs> oh, thank you. There's cytokine storm, there's cytokine drizzle. So the storm was made um, very popular during the COVID time. So cytokines are typically pro-inflammatory enzymes that lead you down a slippery slope of poor health. So the problem with the storm was people didn't explain. There was two reasons why Americans were having a storm. Number one, their immune system was dysfunctional and we needed more and more inflammation to fight a pathogen. We needed too much inflammation to fight a pathogen. Reason mm -hmm. number two, that people were pre-inflamed. And mm -hmm. I think that that's what I deal with. So my credo is always to manage and modulate inflammation. And I recommend that to all our allopathic and alternative type doctors to really deal with inflammation because inflammation is clearly to set the fire within. A little fire does a lot of good. Too much fire starts damaging that area and fire throughout the body, we call that systemic inflammation is actually very deleterious. So getting back to the storm, it's interesting in that these pre-inflamed people, the metaphor I use is here is my mug and my mm. mug actually has some water in it. So it's three quarters full and the water is metaphorically speaking cytokines. The waiter comes over and pours some water in, but he's not paying attention and it all spills over. And now you have this storm, but you really weren't that sick because you were pre-inflamed. Mm. The drizzle, nobody talks about the drizzle because the drizzle is every day a little drizzle adding mm. up to that pre, um, pre-positioned storm of water, if you will, in the mug. And I think if all doctors were, or in practitioners and in individuals were to look and say, how can I decrease my inflammation? I think they would find longevity, both looking at lifespan and health span mm -hmm. and really understanding that inflammation is a critical element. Unfortunately, it's just running rampant through the American society. Yeah, absolutely. It is. And and we can test for some of these things and, you know, take some, some there's some great tests around now where we can measure some of the interleukins and some of the cytokines and some of the inflam inflammatory markers like, you know, C-reactive protein and, and 
others that, that that we can take a look at under the hood. And what I'm, you know, passionate about getting across to people and to doctors who listen to this is that, you know, in, in allopathic and traditional models, we're very much reactive. And it, wouldn't it be much better to be in a preventative mindset and it's very hard sell because when people are well, they're like getting on with their lives. They don't they want it. They're not, they're not like you and I, like deep in the weeds studying constantly so that we are prepared for, you know, like, uh, what did you say? Prepare, um, fix the roof, fix the roof on a sunny day or something like that. There was a quote from somebody that you mentioned, you know, the time to repair the roof is when the sun is shining and not when it's raining and and that 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 attitude means that when you go into and you you contract a virus or a bacteria or a pathogen of some sort then you don't have that half full mug already so that you're gonna tip over the edge you know you you're you're already starting from a better place so you're going to respond better so you're going to get better healthier faster and you know when you're talking about metabolic health like you mentioned a a figure of only seven percent of americans uh, metabolically healthy and I dare say that in New Zealand it's a, exactly the same sort of a figure um me, what is what is metabolic health and why are we so so poor metabolically now you know um what is it what is it that they you know the glucose versus the fat uh being able to uh, produce ketones you know all of that sort of um, information so what is metabolic health in the first place well, metabolic health is your ability to metabolize specific nutrients. And it's interesting when we talk about the 7%, that was uh, blood sugar, it was blood lipids, it was blood pressure, it was body fat, and it was a history of cardiovascular disease. Within that, why, and I can speak to the Americans because they know the American stats, it's real simple. The average American consumes 160 pounds of sugar per year. Sugar works with the reward center in your brain. It's addictive. Mm. Mm. And so much so that when mice were offered sugar, 94% of mice took sugar over cocaine. Wow. And <laughs> all, we as Americans eat 63% of our calories from ultra processed food. The mm. famed Jack Elaine once said, if man makes it, I won't eat it. There is mm. your diet. You start with that and you move on. Um, the average American consumes 146 pounds of wheat, i.e. gluten per year. Our gluten, our wheat is hybridized. It's not what you guys get. It's not what people get in Europe. It's been damaged. It's been shortened. It's made glutinous. It's been exposed to an insecticide, actually yeah, an herbicide glyphosate. called glyphosate. Yeah. We Round have it too. Terrible, terrible, terrible. It's unbelievable. You know, yeah. um, when people talk about health care, they think it's going to the doctor for a once a year pseudo rudimentary checkup. That's yeah. not it. It's every day. There is no lottery ticket of health. No, so I, yeah. you've got to change what we do every day. And yeah. again, you know, just to get that overriding theme of longevity, there's lifespan and health span. And people beg the question, what's the difference? Well, lifespan is how long you live. Health span is how healthy you are without chronic disease. I like to extend health span to vitality. So yeah, I don't want a chronic disease. I want to be healthy, but I want to be vital. I mean, I may not have a chronic disease, but I may not be able to travel because I can't carry my bags. I can't make a connecting flight. I can't lift. I don't have enough muscle mass or I have a shoulder injury. How many times have you seen people that don't have a chronic disease and yet they can't lift or remove their luggage from the overhead no. compartment? And it's not because they're, vertically challenged. <laughs> it, I mean, no. that's vitality. I mm. mean, for me, I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to put a 14 to 16 hour work day. And that doesn't mean, you know, outside, you know, pounding a shovel because I'm not made that way, but I want to be able to do the kind of work that I like. I want my mind to be fluid. I may not have a chronic disease, but I may not have the cognitivity. So it's health span versus lifespan. So where does it come to your environment? But the first thing in your environment that you can control Everybody can control what they put in their mouth, yeah. clearly. So that's the first decision that you make. Good food is a potentiator for health information in your body. Bad food is a potentiator for inflammation throughout your body. Choose wisely. Yeah. And and, and this is, a, um, you know, we, we, we're we also in an environment where it is not made easier for us. And um, the big food industry and is, is their masters at manipulating those, you know, the, the dopamine switches and those things that we 
as humans. And so we get into these cycles of, you know, and I know I've 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 really dealt with a, a sugar craving in the past, you know. So I know what I'm talking about. It's a, you know, you you you're feeling down. You reach for the chocolate, you know. Like we've all done it. We've all been there. And and often now I, I realize that you know if I'm reaching for the chocolate, what my what are my magnesium levels looking like? And did I not do enough stress reduction activities today? Or have I been under a hell of a load? And that and therefore I'm responding with that compensatory wish to find some quick pleasure you know so in it and there's so much uh, mechanism involved and and we're being manipulated by big food industry um because once we get into that cycle of processed food it's very we've got to step ourselves back out of that you know and start to get ourselves more metabolically flexible and able to have intermittent fasting and doing time restricted eating and things like that where when, you know, if we go back to our caveman days, we didn't wake up and go to the fridge. You know, we woke up and we probably had to go and, you know, um, attend to things outside and then find something to eat. So we were fasting for longer periods of time. And then we weren't getting this high, high calorie, nutrient poor food. That is what it, our, you know, is dished up for us. And, 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 you know, a lot of our foods are fortified. Um, they're not fortified. <laughs> They've been stripped of everything good, put in a whole lot of poisons, put some pretty pictures and some pretty colors on it that you're going to sell to you. Um, and, you know, sorry, I'm getting a bit cynical here, but um, this manipulation of our, our of our thinking is, is, is pervasive. So we have to be aware of that. And then we have to be aware of things like glyphosate in their environment. And it's, you know, unfortunately, we stupidly in New Zealand still use glyphosate everywhere, just like in America. Australians are wiser. They've, they've kicked it out of the country apparently recently, which is exciting and hopeful for, for us that we may one day do that. Um, and, and we don't know, most people don't know that when they're, you know, buying corn at the at the grocery shop, shop that it's just covered in glyphosate or, you know, any number of, of products is covered in this crap. Um, and it's destroying our immune health and our gut health. Um, can you actually talk a little bit there about, you know, how does glyphosate, for example, destroy the gut, <laughs> you know? Um, and, and damaged gut health and why why is that important? You know, um, I love that question, but there was an overriding theme that I really want to um, illuminate yeah. on a little bit more. You Got on talked my about the yeah, you know, you know, it was great. You're, it wasn't a soapbox; it, it was a news uh, pontification. It's a good thing. <laughs> um, you talked about how they manipulated our foods, and you talked about serotonin and dopamine. So essentially. These ultra processed foods are addictive because they work with the reward center and the addictive centers in our brains. And when did this happen? How did this happen? And who did it? So it was tobacco companies who bought food companies in 1988 and they held them to 2002. Wow. So a tobacco company, they said, how do we sell food? How do we beat our competition? We have to get people addicted to our food. So let's change the foods. Let's put ingredients like sugar, and other ingredients that provide the addictive portion of the brain and the reward centers of the brain. So people want more and more and more. And that was Robert Morris and RJ Reynolds. They were in the tobacco company, so much so that they've changed their names since then. So when other companies try to compete at some point, they had to do the same thing. Otherwise they were blown out of the water. Mm -hmm. So our ultra processed foods and all the food companies were affected by the tobacco company. Now in America, the tobacco companies took over in the 50s and the 60s and we're very capitalists and I respect that and I think that's a wonderful thing. I think capitalism is fabulous up to the point of hurting somebody's health. Mm. And we can talk about different tobacco companies. We can now talk about the food companies. And just to close that point, that's the reason that there's ultra processed food. So when people understand the history, they shake their head and they understand there are still options and they have to support options, your local farmers, your organic right. foods, things of that nature. Now you asked a really pointed question. Why does glyphosate damage the gut? And how does it damage the gut? Well, glyphosate one is a toxin. 
So the gut has to rid itself of toxins. The gut is actually communicating with the liver in a bi-directional fashion. So toxins like glyphosate, before they do any damage to the gut, go back and forth between the liver and the gut and put a toxic overload on the body. Deeper than mm -hmm. that, glyphosate has been shown to damage microvilli. So here's our gut lining, which is the thickness of a wet paper towel. It's quite thin. Mm -hmm. And that type of vivifying explanation, it lets you know how really thin this semi-permeable tissue is. It's thin, but it's extraordinarily long. If you would unravel the small intestine, which is where we're really speaking about when we talk about the gut, you unravel it to a surface area of a tennis to a basketball court. Amazing. However, on top of the gut is the microvilli, villi being like shaggy carpets. That's mm, where it got its, it's name from. Hairs. And yep. it's these finger-like projections that actually grab foods to bring them through that thin little layer called your small intestine. Those microvilli are without question damaged. So instead of a shaggy carpet of your gut, you'll have like a flat tile. Now mm. those tiles at least are still placed together. Unfortunately, the glyphosate will damage the space between the tiles, which are called our tight junctions, mm -hmm. hence leading you down a path of improper digestion and or leaky gut. The increased incidence of leaky gut, if you want to go to the next step, increases systemic inflammation and ultimately results in autoimmunity. Auto so what you put in your mouth determines your outcome for your whole body. And that makes sense because 80% of our immune cells are in our gut because the most toxins we can get are from the food that we consume. And that's another thing that a lot of these food companies realized. You can give them a lot of toxins and nobody's going to die. They're just going to be damaged. They're not going to have lifespan and they're not going to have health span. You know, one more little factoid. 130 years ago, people lived to an average of 40 years old. The medical field did a great job. Mm. They were excellent in trauma. They found drugs that killed infections, antibiotics, and things like that. And our average age went up to 80. However, look where it is now. It's dramatically dropping. Okay. It's precipitously dropping because of the overuse of these ideas, as opposed to the adaptation of lifestyle change and the conversation of extending life, lifespan and, li and health span. Yeah, absolutely. And this is where... We're living in an exciting time where all this longevity research is coming out and peptides, which we're going to get into and things like, you know, all that sort of exciting stuff. But we've got to get the basics right first. And, and one of your Instagram posts, you had a, a, a picture of like, this is the this is your intestine, the inside and the outside. And it's this thin, like you said, this paper thin thing that with the tight junction start to open up and then the particles of toxins can get through that thing. Yeah, exactly. And it's better than that. And that's your inside to your outside of your body, right? So, like, you, you, this is exposed to the outside because you're putting things in from the outside, and it's coming in. Also, our respiratory tract, of course, is another one. Um, but then, when it gets into the bloodstream, it causes this inflammatory response. When there's when the tight junctions open up and let through particles that are undigested food or pathogens or viruses, you can see how the immune system would react to that. Going, oh, baddies, we better go and shoot them. So what actually happens there in autoimmune? So now we've got leaky gut, which a lot of people have. I do a lot of you know microbiome testing. I see a lot of zonulin very high on 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 leaky gut, you know, on, on gut profiles. What actually happens when the when those pathogens and things make it into the bloodstream? What sort of a response? I mean, there's a hundred different autoimmune diseases and things, but you know, just give us a, a basic what actually happens there. And which back immune on what you system? said before. Yeah. Your digestive tract is really the outside of the body. It's actually the first line of defense in your immune system. So you've got your digestive tract, you have your innate, and you have your adapter acquired immune system. So it's been postulated that the first time the outside world meets the inside world it was, is when something gets digested through your small intestine. So when it goes through your small intestine and it goes from your gut into your bloodstream, your bloodstream and your immune system has to determine is it self or is it foreign? Obviously, obviously, if it's self, that's a good thing. If it's foreign, you then attack it. And that starts with an immune response and you have an elevation of inflammation. You make antibodies to it. Unfortunately, if not able to, or you're overloaded with a lot of toxins or antigens that are coming through the gut, 
you get an overload, your immune system gets confused and starts to attack things that look like the food. So these foods have what we call a protein sequence. Mm. They're a long list or a long list of numbers. It's actually 15 numbers. It's like a zip code. Mm -hmm. I know zip codes are seven where I am, seven numbers. So there's a list. If five match between the food and a part of your body, when your immune system is dysfunctional, you attack yourself. So autoimmunity wow. means having an immune response to yourself. So leaky gut leads you down a path, a detrimental path of autoimmunity. It damages joints. It damages your brain. It can damage your spine. It increases the incidence of hypertension. There's a gut to skin axis. There's a gut to lung axis. So interestingly enough, COVID, which you alluded to before, increased the incidence dramatically of leaky gut because viruses are toxins and they're shedded through the gut and they're also reservoirs for the gut. So for me, when I see a patient, the first question I ask is, have you had COVID in the last 12 months? And if you had, I like to check your gut barrier permeability. Yeah, exactly. And another instance where I really like to check that and, you know, just as a, an aside is when someone's had a concussion or any sort of brain injury, because brain injuries often cause leaky gut as well. Like 60% of people with brain injuries have um, a leaky gut after after the event. Um, so that's another, you know, time. So basically when I'm doing a workup, I like to do a microbiome on most people <laughs> because if I can, you know, and if, 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 if funds allow, um, because then we can get a, a, a nice overview. There's other, other tests and things that we can do as well, of course. But so if you've got leaky gut, what can you do to start to repair that gut? And you, 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 oh. you know, want to rebuild that lining. Well, I have what I call a seven R action plan. So mm -hmm. R number one is reset, reset what your diet, your lifestyle and your mindset sitting with the patient. You have to let them know health is their most valuable asset. They have, and nothing is stable if you don't have health. Even Warren Buffett, who's in his 90s now, has said the secret to his success has always been good health, and he values that more than any asset that mm. he has. Yeah. Kudos yeah. to Warren Buffett. So reset, reset your diet. So I use a few acronyms to help people remember to eat well, and the acronym are simply GPS, GPS, mm -hmm. no gluten, no ultra-processed food, no added sugar, DNA, no dairy. Sorry, Midwest, no nicotine, no artificial sweeteners, yeah. no vegetable oils, and no deep fried foods. So if you start with that, life is grand. Then the second R is remove. We want to remove pathogens. That's where you move and you remove your food sensitivities, your food allergies, you remove your pathogens. So you do a light detox to remove the toxins from your liver. You can also use specific nutrients like oregano oil, berberine, garlic, serum bovine immunoglobin, mm -hmm. and what I call different formulas that are biofilm buster. What is a biofilm? Mm -hmm. Everybody has a little plaque on our teeth. It's a bacteria igloo. It's sticky. It protects the bacteria. So you need something to break open the biofilm, expose the bacteria, and something like serum bovine immunoglobin, which is a direct binder to things on the gut wall, and take it out. Um so what's interesting is that in biofilms, and that's a whole, that's probably another webinar yeah. for us. Yeah. The NIH has spoken about biofilms mm. being 80% of the bacterial infections in the gut. Wow. So prior to the idea of me acknowledging it and understanding about it, I got some results, you know, and I thought that was a big deal until <laughs> this came along. I was like, oh, goodness gracious. And then I added that component. Then my outcomes really exponentially increased, you know, it raised the roof, if you will. So, so, bi to... so biofilms are just sorry to interrupt, but you know, like biofilms, so they sort of cover the virus because you know it's 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 an area that I'm still you know just just diving into really. Um, it, it, they sort of cover the virus or the pathogen in in a coating that the immune system no longer sees. Is that correct? And then yeah, you, it's you a bacteria. To break it. It's like a plaque in your mouth. It's a bacteria igloo. It's sticky. It's gluing. It protects the bacteria. So mo and most of those bacteria, believe it or not, that have the igloo or antibiotic resistant bacteria. Wow. So the bacteria morph itself to be yeah. able to protect itself from antibiotics. So I'm not, if I could say this, anti-antibiotic. Yeah. You know, you have to look at but, everything in health as risk yeah. reward. Exactly. And yeah. um, 
I, I just don't think patients understand there are some downsides to antibiotics. They oh, have their yeah. place. Look, if I jumped in a pond and I got meningitis, hit me with it. If I had a staph infection, hit me with it. I had some dental work and you know you have to be very careful. 90% of people that have a bacterial infection in their mouth get Alzheimer's. Three times the incidence of um, heart attack if wow. you have a bacterial infection. So I had to take an antibiotic. I'm sorry, everybody, if you're mad at me, especially my chiropractic brethren, but you know, in those instances, yes. Have I taken mm. an antibiotic because of a viral infection? No. For mm. me personally, I said risk reward. Yep. I, I totally, I totally get it. And and you, there are times when you absolutely have to, but you have to understand you are destroying all the good with the bad because it's like they just it just shoots down everything <laughs> indiscriminately, like mm. Rambo with a with a machine gun. And so we have to repopulate then, don't we? And have to reestablish and re. Uh, restore that balance again if we have been exposed to antibiotics and these bacteria do morph and change and become stronger and that's the, the other danger with antibiotics when you take it for some sort of infection that you take a round of antibiotics and most people think oh I'm good to go now and it's like well hang on a minute we better re-establish it the good bacteria and then they often come back even more resistant and stronger it's a bit like chemo in, in, in a way as well with with mm -hmm. cancer is that, yeah, it can uh, initially help, but sometimes it comes back to bite you in the ass because they become more. The ones that survive are stronger because Without of that. Without question. So to pick back up on that 7R, just to finish up that loop, mm, yeah. you want to replace. You want to replace what? You want to replace digestive enzymes, pancreatic enzymes, um, liver enzymes, and you also want to add bile. Bile yeah. is a critical element. The mm. decrease of the deficiency in bile leads people down a slope of getting an increased incidence of SIBO, leaky gut, and high cholesterol. So bile is a great emulsifier. Part four is regenerate. Basically, we want to regenerate with a plethora of nutrients that apply a pleiotrophic effect that heal and seal the gut lining and mm -hmm. also create an anti-inflammatory environment in the gut. The next one would be re-inoculate. Re inoculate just like you said, with pre and probiotics. Probiotics are good. But please, everybody, you Not need a prebiotic yeah. with a probiotic so they feed and they fit together to make what we call a postbiotic, which is what's left. The sixth R would be retest and reintroduce, reintroduce foods that you took out, retest for those foods like food sensitivities. I'm a big food sensitivity um, tester. And the last thing I recommend is retain. Once you get healthy, let's stay healthy. So it's a twofold problem. Number one, you want in the process, one, you want to get healthy. So you want to retain your health. Number two, you want to continue to retain your health with a good quality diet, exercise, and a lifestyle, hence taking the steps towards longevity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just to, to double down on that um, bile, um, because, you know, I think there's it's, it's something that's under talked about, not talked about enough, is, is gallbladder. And often if someone gets a gallstone or something, they just swoop the gallbladder out. Um when really it's not really dealing with the the, the problem. Um, and, you know, we need phosphatidylcholine in a ratio of 10 to 1 with cholesterol uh, to have good bile, the fluidity of the bile. And so sometimes adding things like Tudka or ox bile can be really beneficial to get that that fluidity back into the, and so if you're dealing with SIBO, you know, that that's a very antimicrobial thing, bile. So, you know, we have to, in the pancreatic enzymes and the, the stomach acid, proton pump inhibitors is another pet peeve of mine that, that people are just put on them like candy and often stay on them for years when they were meant to be for a four to six week sort of a period for an acute situation. But the, the and people don't understand, well, um, you know, harmless. They're not harmless. They do a hell of a lot of damage. I had Dr. Nathan Bryan on the show last week who's a nitric oxide expert and he just he explained the connection of proton pump inhibitors destroying noxide, nitric oxide production mm -hmm. uh, in the body, let alone protein synthesis and you know vitamin B12 and all of those other deficits that come along with it. Um, yeah, what, what's your take on that? Proton pump inhibitors, like you said, they should be utilized for four to six weeks. Unfortunately, utilized for four to six months, years. I've even had people who use them for decades. Wow, they increase the incidence of leaky gut. <laughs> They increase the incidence of leaky blood brain barrier. I think they may be one of the most overused over the counter medications in America today. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that's a brilliant way to <laughs> end that conversation. So if you can get off those things, you may need to titrate them down and obviously work with your doctor on that, but um, not something you want to be on for a long period of time. Now, now let's show the conversation a little bit so we talked a little bit about gut we've talked about mitochondrial health we, you know honestly i need to have you on 10 times in order to to really do deep dives into each of these areas and perhaps we can have you on again um but let's let's move into longevity and peptides and and some of the exciting stuff that really you know i, I love shiny objects and you were you were talking to me about some of the peptides um dnf10 and um uh what were some of the others um BPC one five seven and TB TB four uh, the fragment of TB four. Um, can you can you start to talk about peptides and what the heck are peptides? Because I can tell you down in New Zealand, nobody is talking about peptides except me <laughs> and a couple of my what. friends. <laughs> you know, it's about I it. I can tell you this: in America, everybody's talking about peptides. They're so <laughs> hot, I'm afraid to touch them because they'll burn my hands. <laughs> as far as the conversation. <laughs> so let, let's talk about what a peptide is. A peptide is a short chain of amino acids, generally less than 40 amino acids. If it's mm -hmm. over 40 amino acids in a chain, it becomes a protein. They're natural. They're bioidentical or altered. They are synthetic. A combo of peptides signals a body to repair itself. It's been a breakthrough theme to help the body from the inside out. I utilize them myself. And I utilize them with various patients with great results. So let's go through some of the peptides. Let's give like a brief overview. Mm. Peptide number one that I like to talk about is lactotripeptides and how they work. Mm -hmm. Essentially, they improve vascular endothelial functions. Mm -hmm. So what would happen after ingesting a lactopeptide? You would get vascular endothelial cells. You would produce NO2. And when NO2 increases, more NO2 more flexible blood vessels. They're not quite as tight. So essentially, these lactopeptides lower blood pressure, they improve vascular functions, they improve va vasodilatory reactions, they improve flexibility, and they prevent arterial sclerosis. So that's wow. number one. Mm. Now, how does that sound? Are you ready to go with that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like I said, I had Dr. Dr. Nathan Bryan on last week talking about nitric oxide and the importance of nitric oxide. So anything that's going to support that 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 pathway and vascular endothelial health is is just huge. And I actually have never heard of the lactotripeptide. So you've just put a new one on my radar. That's brilliant. I'm hoping to give you a couple more before the day is through. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Okay. So DF10 is the other one. And in DNF10, a simple takeaway, this is short, is it decreases ghrelin, increases leptin. So what does mm -hmm. that mean? Ghrelin grrr, makes you hungry. So it decreases hunger and increases satiety. Mm. Is that like a GOP1 agonist type of thing or a GOP? It's not a GOP1, but it is like that in its effect. Uh-huh. Mm. That's another new one on me. Haven't heard that one either. So I'm two for two. I'm, you I'm are. on the street. Yes. <laughs> I know I'm I know when I get to the end and I get to the BPC 157, you've heard about it. However, yeah. when I tell you how to stack it, I think it may be something new and exciting for you. Excellent. But before we get to that, let me share with you Pepti Strong, which are peptides from hydrolyzed fava bean proteins. Mm. So this is actually backed by two peer-reviewed clinical studies. So this is a plant-based intelligent ingredient that has outperformed animal protein. You know, I am pro-animal protein. Some people mm. aren't, you know, so you can yeah. banter back and forth. It has a multi-dimensional effect on muscle health, promoting muscle strength, improving recovery after intense exercise, boosting energy, and supporting the synthesis of protein that assists in maintaining and building muscle. So this peptide-specific effect to address the muscle homostasis between muscle protein synthesis, muscle atrophy, and inflammation, it offers an alternative to a purely uncharacteristic nutritional intervention. So wow. typically it builds muscle or it doesn't build muscle. This one actually helps with specific types of muscles like certain type one and type two muscles. It also mm -hmm. reduces... Um, fat accumulation, it reduces tumor necrosis factor. It also is great by turning on the sirtuins and it induces mitochondrial biogenesis in Bloody the hell. muscle cell. Again, 
I said that to me, longevity is turning on the health switches. These peptides are turning on certain health switches and turning off certain antagonistic to health. And that's also in a switch. Well, now you're three for three because I haven't heard of that one either. I don't know where I've been hiding under a rock because I thought I knew quite a lot about peptides, but <laughs> that's great. <laughs> so well, let's talk about a peptide that comes from a food. Let's go. Let's okay. see if we can get four for four. Himalayan yeah, yeah. tartary buckwheat. It's a flour loaded with over 100 immune nutrients. It's plant-based immune benefit, polyphenols, proteins, prebiotics, antioxidants, resistant starch, soluble fiber. It's actually 100% organic. It's grain-free, it's gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan, and non-GMO. It's wow. packed with rutin and quercetin. It's got over 22,000 milligrams of protective plant nutrients per kilogram. Mm -hmm. And here's the key. It's got a phytonutrient called hobamine, which has positive effects on immune function. It also produces magnesium, zinc, and B vitamins. A good friend of mine, the father of functional medicine, Dr. Jeffrey Bland, oh, sells wow. Himalayan tartary buckwheat. However, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. So you've heard about it, but you've heard about him also, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. However, I wanted to talk about the peptide that it produces, the two hoba, which is a natural molecule which is discovered in the Himalayan tartary buckwheat. Two two hoba provides a way to support the body's natural defenses against oxidative stress from free radicals in the body. And we all know oxidative stress can be caused by many factors, including exposure to chemicals, smoking dietary and sugar fats and alcohol and radiation. So two hober to me is a Swiss army knife of health for the modern day lifestyle. Wow. I have a friend who has a, in one of his formulations, he um, owns a company called SRW, which is a, a longevity uh, supplement. And he has that in his, um, one of his, one of his combinations. And that was the first time I'd heard of two hobo. So yeah, that's a really, and, and this is in peptide form, like an injectable, Type of all, not oral? And, and you just you just brought up the key component. Yeah, all of these are oral forms, and that's why they're ah. so exciting. You can take them in a pill form because some people don't like injections. Other yeah. practitioners, like chiropractors, some natural paths, um, health coaches, they're not able to inject, so yeah. they're able to utilize the um, capsular form. So you just wow. mentioned a company. My friend owns a company in America called Health Jevity, Mike Antonelli. He does a great job. And he's always been sharing all this information, really updating me um, on the utilization and information of peptides. So all of these, the DNF10, the, 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 all of these are oral. That is super All of these exciting. are oral. And that's wow. the most exciting idea. You do not have to get an injection. There was a lot of yeah. questions about the injections and not everybody can yeah, get injected and not everybody can administer an injection yeah yeah yeah, so yeah. Oral, oral. wow I, I need to know more on where 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 you get where do you get these and how do you get educated in it because the, this is the, one of the problems we have in new zealand because i've been trying to work on on getting peptides down to new zealand and, and of course the regulatory situation here is very unclear around this and it's 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 quite a mission to be able to get you know, these down here, and then we have to get a bunch of doctors certified in this and, and so on and so forth. Um, but if these are, so are these oral supplements, a bit like the bioregulators. Um, so I had Dr. Bill Lawrence on recently, you know, talking about his bioregulator study. Is it sort of a, similar, in a similar vein to those? I don't think they're really like a bioregulator. Again, I like to look at them as switches and helping to synthesize healing inside the body. And again, um, Health Jevity is an American uh, company. My friend owns it. Um, wow. I have no stock in it or anything like that. He's just Need a friend and utilizes his product <laughs> line. Yeah. He does send to Australia. It takes about uh, a week's period of time. I can give you all the contact or we can put them in the show notes. I'm happy to share. I'm here yeah. to help. Oh, wonderful. That'd and be fantastic. Probably the forerunner in science for um, peptides would be A4M. Now I know yeah. A4M is is America based. Yeah, so I'm between part of those A4M. two, Health Jevity yeah. and A4M, I think you're going to have a synergy. Yeah, yeah. And Dr. William Seeds is another fantastic guy to learn from as well at SSRP. I don't know if you know Dr. Seeds. Um, yes, he wrote, yes, um, absolutely. Yeah, he's he's wonderful as well. But A4M, yeah, I've, I've been tossing up to do the certification program with A4M or 
Dr. Seed's one of the one of the other. The, the problem is down here is that we yeah <laughs> we we don't have a, a framework for it right now. You know to be able to to do it. So getting oral ones, and that's why I'm also very interested in the bioregulators because they are oral um, supplements that that have no sort of implications. You know problematic right. implications. Well, with... I'll put you. I'll put you in touch with them when we get. Yeah. You know when we shut wow, down. This is super but exciting. We got to get to the big guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to tell you, I want the, the heavyweight, and then I want to go to the look to the future. Okay. So the one that I like to talk about is BPC-157, which is mm. composed of 15 amino acids. It's a partial sequence called body protection compound. It was actually discovered and isolated from human gastric juice back in 1993. Mm. So it's naturally produced in the GI, and it's very stable in gastric juice. So very interesting in that um, it has a lot of health promoting properties. It has a swath, if you will, in that it's immune modulating, it's anti-inflammatory. It reduces fibrosis. It modulates again, nitric oxide. It's cytoprotective. It stimulates angiogenesis and reduces neuroinflammation. In addition, it improves um, gum disease. You know, I'm doing real well wow. coming around helping my gum disease and it's known for a lot of musculoskeletal arrows. Now, its nickname is the Wolverine supplement because like the comic book character or the Marvel character, you mm -hmm. almost heal before your eyes. Mm -hmm. You know how he regenerates. Yeah, so fast. And, right, so yep. BPC-157 is the Wolverine supplement. Now you talked about protein pump inhibitors. Mm -hmm. So the power of BPC, when trying to get patients off proton pump inhibitors, the use of BPC, if I found is profound. Not wow. only can it enable you to discontinue those proton pump inhibitors, it can also restore gastric mucosal and so-called mucoepithelial breakdown, thereby reducing immune-mediated disease because antigen president cell is unable to dispose through the leaky gut. So if you want to get off the PPIs, I think a staple standard usage would be the utilization of BPC. Wow. So I know you've heard about that, but yeah, I don't think I've got it in my range. Yeah, yeah uh, that's I one of them with, I have in my shop. Yeah, so I want to hit you with one oral. more, okay? Because okay. I know I know we're in a limitation of time. So my look to the future: what's the new guy in a block? The new heavyweight, TB4 frag, okay. helps reduce inflammation, protects cells from further damage, promotes faster recovery. It balances cytokine inflammation. It aids in tissue repair. It supports healthy mitochondrial function and inhibits most mast cell activation. It's known to bind to actin and promote cell migration, including mobilization, migration, and a differentiation of stem cells, really? which form new blood vessels and regenerate tissue together. Now, we oh. call BPC-157 the Wolverine supplement. Mm -hmm. The Wolverine stack is TB4, FRAG, with BPC-157 because TB4 for our frag geared towards widespread tissue regeneration and anti-inflammatory properties. Why BPC-157 is focused on providing gut healing properties, nootropic benefits and providing muscle regeneration benefits as well. So you get one plus one, which really equals four on wow. the healing scale. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, I've I've always stacked like thymosin alpha one with BPC one five seven, and that's a really good combination. But I haven't had TB four, um, you know, frag in the mix. I've had thymosin beta four, um, but not the frag. What's yeah, but TB four, interesting, is forty three molecules. TB four frag is four molecules to make it more absorbable. That's the secret sauce. And is that one oral as well? So the TB four frag. All oral? of the things I mentioned to were oral. Bloody Everyone hell. is That's oral. exciting. That's super exciting. Yeah. Because it, this is, you know, one of the big, big limiting factors that we've had so far is that, you know, we can only get certain ones, you know, and the injectable situation with most of the peptides makes it very difficult unless you're a practitioner yourself or you know what you're doing or you're under the guidance of a very good doctor. And in New Zealand, there was very few, if any. Um, and so, this sort of stuff's really, really gold. <laughs> I'm super excited now for all of that. I'm going to go and dive into health jeopardy and find out a little bit more. 
Um, I will connect you. Yeah, it's so just wow. Before we get on, I'll connect you. I promise. <laughs> That's super exciting. Um, what else is floating your boat in the longevity space at the moment? You know, like where where is where are we going? Like when I you know talk to people about slowing the aging process, reversing the aging process, and doing true diagnostic age testing and DNA methylation and stuff, and people just look at it like you got two heads. You can't slow the aging process down. It is what it is, and we're not going to live, you know, like I truly believe that if we can hold ourselves together now for the next 10 years, while the scientists and doctors get themselves together further in this space, then we're, 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 we're looking at a really long health span as well as lifespan. Yeah, if, if we Agreed. follow all the lifestyle and diet and, you know, avoid all the toxins, that's probably the biggest caveat. Um, <laughs> if we can do all of that, we've really got good chances to live super long lives. Yeah, I think the one thing I'll say is I will we'll double down on the peptides in that the increase of muscle mass, which is the mm. currency of oh, longevity, longevity or the yeah. organ yeah. of longevity, um, because sarcopenia starts at a one to two percent muscle loss each year after age 40. People at age, by age 65 may have lost 25 percent of muscle mass. Less muscle mass leads to inability to efficiently dispose of glucose. And also, as we get older, we have more microbiome gut issues. So I think eating well will definitely help our microbiome modulation, you know, adding probiotics because that'll help in muscle recovery and growth, the production of short chain fatty acids like butyrate, yeah. and also positively impact muscle fatigue and recovery. So avoiding sarcopenia by eating well and adding these peptides orally <laughs> I think you've got the dynamic duo for health. Absolutely. This is just, just, just so, and it's a lot of it's simple stuff. Hey, eh? it's the lifestyle stuff. It's simple, but it's not easy to do. Correct. You know, it takes discipline. It takes a change. And, you know, when we go back to that metabolic health discussion, you know, I have ways of trying to walk people back towards metabolic health. If you just go suddenly, well, I'm going to fast for the next three days, you're going to have a hard time. Um, but if you walk yourself back where you slowly, you know, get into a more flexible state and that's where intermittent fasting is wonderful to try to transition people from that addictive cycle that most of us are in um, into a state of, of health. And, and if we do all of these little bits and pieces every day, um, you know, I'm really, really excited. I had um, Ryan Smith on the show a few weeks ago from True Diagnostic right. and it looking wonderful. at- yeah, like it's such a brainy man, man amazing. Um, the 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 I, I, the science is evolving. I, I don't think we can hang our hat hat on everything at the moment in the age testing space. I think it's sort of, you know, still um, a few things, but it really gives us some good indications of where we're where we're heading. And um, I had my my test done, and um, my Dunedin pace, which is one of the the major ones that has the most accuracy came back at 0.69 which I was stoked about because that is you know how uh, some of the other markers were not so great some of the first generation clocks and I, I know that I'd lived sort of the 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 equivalent of a rock star's lifestyle previously in my life as an ultra marathon runner because I caused massive inflammation and massive oxidative stress and I'm not actually a fan of 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 that anymore um, because I had no idea back then what I was doing, but, um, you know, and there's the sporting aspect of it, the, the goals that I wanted to achieve, but it did some massive damage, right? And and now I'm sort of clawing my way back to, to better health. But now I can see that all the the protocols that I have in place are really having a massive impact and, and, and slamming on the brakes, you know, really slowing the aging process down. I mean, we're not able to stop it, but we're certainly able to slow it down and and that sort of you know the proofs in the pudding there when you do those age testing um and they will get better you know in, in time as as these new things come online they've got the omics testing coming shortly which means we'll be able to look at individual organs and see how they are aging which is like the next level of stuff that ryan's going to be bringing to the market in a few weeks so yeah so some pretty pretty juicy stuff for us to to dive Great into. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to say one thing. I just want to tie it all together. Yeah, please. I, 
we're getting we're getting to the end and this this has been great and i would love to do it again because yeah, I, your, your podcast you enthuse me without <laughs> question so i think jim rome said it best take care of your body it's the only place you have to live yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's, that's perfect. And be in that preventative space. And and Dr. Rob, you, you're active on social media. You have books. Yes. Can you can you share with us, where can people read your books? Where can they, you know, share all the links with us where people, Absolutely. people work with you, actually? Um, tele, do you do telehealth as, as well? I, I, do te- I, I do telehealth all the time. Oh, so my website is uh, drrobertsilverman.com. My social media, my Instagram and my Facebook are Dr. Robert Silverman, of course. So please follow me. And I see that you've looked at a lot of my posts. We post every day. We're going to go do a video right after this. We've got some patients waiting. I do a lot of virtual. I do a lot of speaking engagements. I'm very happy. I have a new book out. You can see it over my right shoulder called Immune Reboot, all about the immune system. Mm -hmm. So you can go to immunereboot.com and get your copy. And I look forward to hearing from everybody. And I just want to thank you for the job that you're doing. I really appreciate it. And I want to tell everybody else out there one thing. What you do for yourself dies with you. What you do for others lives for eternity. And that's why Lisa and I do these podcasts, because we want to make that indelible mark on everybody out there. So I want to thank you very much for listening to me today. Oh, Dr. Rob, you're an absolute treasure. And I'm not going to let you go now that I've found you. <laughs> I'm okay, gonna... <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm I'm enamored by your work and your 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 passion and, and, and all the wonderful things that you share in the universe. So thank you so much for, for everything that you do. I think you're absolutely amazing. My pleasure. Look forward to chatting with you again. Have a great day, everybody. Be well.